Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tina and today we are doing my very first Behind the Books. Um, I did talk about this in my last video um, that I wanted to start this series on my channel called Behind the Book, BTB for short. And it's pretty much talking about the book that I have read throughout the week. I'm only going to try to read one book per week for this series, but if I happen to read like let's say three books throughout the week then i will talk about the last book that i've read for that week <laughs> if that makes any sense but anyways so yeah if you are new here please subscribe if you haven't already also hit the notification bell so you are notified anytime i upload um so i hope you guys enjoy me doing this series this is something that i want to incorporate here on my channel is other things that i love to do other than makeup um, so yeah, if you're interested in watching, please keep on watching and we'll jump right into it. Alright guys, so what I'm going to be introducing to you guys for my first behind the book is The Always and Forever Lara Jean by Ginny Han. So I have read the other two books, the all, uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before and um, P.S. I Love You. I really didn't even know that Ginny Han was going to bring out a third book. I thought it was just going to be the two, so I was kind of excited. Actually, I was really excited when she, uh, I heard that she was going to have this Always and Forever Lara Jean. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of give you a overview um, of the first two books, just so that way you guys can get a little insight. If you haven't read the books and you plan to read the books, I suggest you don't watch this video until you do, or... Um, I'm pretty sure everybody has already seen the movie that is on Netflix. It is, I'm going to say the movie is about 98% accurate as, um, as far as like from the first book, which is pretty awesome for it to be so close to the book and it being in a moving form because most of the time there's a lot of cutouts. Um, so I'm actually pretty pleased with the movie. It was not a disappointment in my book. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the first and second book before I jump into the third one. Um, if you are new here, what I'm doing is I'm starting a new a series here on my channel called Behind the Book where I talk about the latest book that I've read throughout the week. Um, I'm not saying that I'm only going to read one book per week. I could read three books per week, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the last book that I have read for the week so that way I can make sure... Um, I give you guys a little insight of what I've been reading. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. So in the first book, it really talks about the main characters. Um, so the main character is Lara Jean. She has two sisters, an older sister named Margot, and a little sister named Catherine, a.k.a. Kitty. And she, they live with their father, um, Dr. Covey. I don't know if I'm saying their last name right, because in the first book, she says it's pronounced like lovey but instead it's covey but in the movie they pronounce it covey so so her older sister is going off to college this year um she is going to scotland this is lara jean's junior year um so yeah and pretty much lara jean is a socially awkward person she doesn't have very many friends in fact i've only read about one of her close friends in the first book and that is chris um, I believe her real name is Christina, um, but they call her Chris, so her sister has a boyfriend, but will soon to be her ex-boyfriend named Josh, which is also their neighbor, which is also Lara Jean's friend as well, but you know, that they're neighborly friends. They've grown up next door to each other for like five years, I believe it says in the book. Um, uh, the whole concept of the first book is about these five letters that got sent out and she doesn't know who sent them out until the very end. Her little sister is the one that sends out the letters out of spite and out of revenge because Lara Jean pretty much embarrasses her um, in front of one of her crushes, actually her first crush and her only crush, which happens to be Josh, Margot's ex-boyfriend, um, which you'll soon learn to find out that Lara Jean actually wrote him a love letter as well. So not only does not only did Lara Jean have, you know, a crush and loved him, but also their little sister. And that's something that she didn't want them to ever know. So Lara Jean um, pretty much embarrassed Kitty in front of Josh one night when they were discussing something. She said Kitty is like the least classiest 
uh, of the three and you know she always has to tell her how to clean her body and when to clean her body and this doesn't sit well with kitty so the entire book kitty is pretty much like has this grudge as well like she holds this grudge pretty much the entire book over laura jean doesn't talk to her doesn't acknowledge her you know just really she just really holds this grudge over laura jean but she is the one that sends out these letters and there's five total there's one that was addressed to josh which is their neighbor peter kavinsky which is one of the other main characters lucas which is um one of become one of the people that becomes Laura Jean's um close friends towards the end of the book and towards the second book um John Ambrose which was um one of Laura Jean's other friends from like elementary and then Kenny so Josh Peter Lucas John Ambrose and Kenny five boys get these letters sent out to them and Laura Jean doesn't find out that these letters have been sent out until Peter Kavinsky comes up to her and just pretty much is like hey I got this letter it sounds pretty personal like I don't know if you actually meant to send it out to me I'm totally flattered that you like me and you would think of me in this kind of way but it's never gonna happen that's pretty much what he tells her he's literally like trying to diss her but sweetly um and she's completely confused as to what the heck he's talking about until she literally sees the letter in her hand and she's like in his hand and she is like oh my gosh how the heck did she get that and then she's completely freaking out because then she realizes if he has his letters i'm pretty sure somehow the other four boys have gotten those letter letters and that is completely crazy because one is addressed to josh so with that being said that's pretty much the whole entire book her and peter end up getting really close because of this because at the same time peter has broken up with his girlfriend or i think his girlfriend has broken up with him which her name is genevieve which used to be lara jean's friend but they're now ex-friends so they're pretty much enemies um but lara jean tries to stay clear of her because she's just not that type of person that wants drama in her life like i said she's really socially awkward if she's not at home she's at school if she's not at school she's at home that's pretty much it so um so what happens is that Peter comes up with this idea about pretending that they're dating just to get Jen upset and maybe she'll take him back. So that's the whole idea um, as to why Peter agrees to this. And then Largino was like, okay, cool, you know, I'll do it too because I need to make sure Josh realizes that that letter was in the sister's ex-boyfriend. Like, her sister loved him. It, they weren't just some fling, that's it. Like, no. Her sister was in love with him he was in love with her sister so it just wouldn't look right she didn't want her sister to feel like she was going behind her back trying to steal her boyfriend so she had to you know get josh to realize like that was a total mistake so what they do peter and laura jean end up making a contract which is a cute little contract and you'll see it in the movie as well if you've seen it the movie already um you know pretty much all the do's and don'ts into their fake relationship but this fake relationship soon becomes something special which i completely like am all for like who doesn't want a cute high school romance like so yeah that's pretty much for the first one you know chaotic she had to live with it and then towards the end is when she finds out that kitty is the one that sent him because i think kitty comes out clean and says hey i did it you know pretty much now you know not to mess with me her sister's a little sassy one okay so in the second book Lara Jean and Peter Kavinsky are exclusive and you know like every relationship it starts off you know pretty smooth and then eventually you know secrets start happening where you start holding secrets from one another so pretty much what happens here is Lara Jean and Peter's relationship gets a little rocky um she finds out that peter is talking to genevieve again which she thought was completely over but not like talking to where they're gonna get back together he's just trying to be a good friend which lara jean does not agree with because it's already like they're broken up like she needs to go find another boy to cry all over because that's my boy that's pretty much how i feel like lara jean sees it and not only that lara jean happens to get close with john ambrose um because they have a mutual friend, which is an elderly lady that Laura Jean goes and visits at this nursing home that she, um, what is it, she goes and hangs out at just to, 
do like charity not really charity but she just goes and keeps the, the people company and the elderly lady that she happens to get close to in the first book happens to be john ambrose grandmother i believe grandmother or aunt i can't remember i want to say grandmother um so yeah that's how they pretty much connect and they in the second book they're pen pals you know they're writing each other back and forth because i think john lives further away from her so that's pretty much and i'm pretty i mean they could definitely use like cell phones and call each other but they decide to write each other through letters peter finds out about it he's not too worried because he's just like oh, okay you know it's not largey like she's not the type of person that's gonna go and cheat on me but that's not really where their problems start their problems start when she starts finding out little things about peter you know still talking to jen and not telling her about it like you know that really upsets her that he's pretty much keeping it away from her and then they soon like they all meet up Laura Jean, Peter, Chris, John, Ambrose, Genevieve they all um meet up together because this is their senior year in high school and um they did a time capsule where they buried a time capsule in one of their backyards so they're all meeting up so that they can dig it up since they'll be graduating soon so it leads up to them discussing about a game they used to play called assassin which is pretty much tag um they were talking about how many times each player has won and then they bring up the fact that Lara Jean has never won a game and then this is when it all gets crazy because Genevieve aka Lara Jean's enemy discusses how Lara Jean is not tough enough. That's why she never got anybody out. She just doesn't have that killer instinct. So this awakens something up in Lara Jean. Like it literally lights a fire under her butt because she's like, okay, then let's play. You know, like game on. So Jen, of course, comes up with, okay, well, whoever wins gets three wishes or gets a wish from each player. Um, and automatically Lara Jean's like, she's going to want me to break up with Peter because she wants him. And, you know, so she's just like, fine, game on. So that's that. They all draw names to see who they got to tag out first. Um, so they end up doing that. And this is where hers and Peter's relationship starts unraveling because, you know, they haven't seen each other in weeks because of the game. She's taking this game so seriously because she does not want to get tagged out. She wants to be the last person. She wants to win this game. So what happens is Peter and... um Lara Jean, you know, they're not talking. They talk over the phone, but they don't see each other. So one day she's like trying to meet Peter um, after school to, I guess, see him before he goes to his lacrosse game. But then she gets told that, hey, Peter's not here. He had a family emergency and he's not here. He couldn't make it to his game. And at that, she's like, oh my gosh, like it has to be something serious because Peter will never, would never miss a game for something that wasn't serious. So she's worried. So she jumps into a car and she goes to go check on peter now she's driving up she sees right there in the middle of the street peter and jen hugging each other he's comforting her and she's just like completely shocked like what the heck is going on how come he hasn't told me like what is going on like she's freaking out so she doesn't even stop she just keeps driving and she's completely upset but she's trying not to show it until later on when he's you know texting her and then she brings it up like how was everything with Jen and whatever and like he completely like instead of saying oh I'm sorry I didn't tell you he was just like oh it was fine like if it wasn't a secret but to her it was a secret because he blew off something so important for somebody that's not important to him anymore so that's really where the relationship starts unraveling and at that point she's just like I'm so done with this girl trying to you know take thing take something that's mine like you know so what happens is that she's also getting tired of being Peter's second. You know, she wants to be his number one, but apparently, like, she can't because Jen will always have that one spot for, um, that number one spot. So it really upsets her that it, that's probably the ugly truth of it. But in his mind, that's not, like, Laura Jean is his number one, but to Laura Jean, that's not the case. So they break up, and then it ends up coming, uh, John Ambrose and Lara Jean become you know fairly close to where they're dating and whatnot and Peter finds this out he's completely heartbroken but he's also determined to get her back so what he does he hands her a necklace and he's like it's all right he's like one of these days I'm gonna put that necklace back around your neck and pretty much he's competing with John Ambrose for Lara Jean and 
long story short, at the end of this story, Lara Jean ends up realizing that she loves Peter. Like, she is so in love with Peter that she wants to be with him. And she cares about John Ambrose, but she loves Peter. So she is the type of person that's going to explain it to you. And that's exactly what she did. She, she told John Ambrose, like, hey, you know, I think you're a great guy. I think you're awesome we could have been awesome but peter was here first he has my heart and i couldn't do that to you because you're too good of a person and oddly enough john ambrose is a little hurt but he understands completely and he says you know it's not our time maybe one day our time will come so that's pretty much how that ends peter and Lara Jean end up getting back together um and then we go to the final book so the final book is pretty much ending up their uh, year of senior year and this is where they are planning on their future for college and what colleges they want to go to. Laura Jean's um, dream college is to go to UVA. At this point she's feeling a little upset. She's like, I shouldn't have sent my letters out that late. You know, I shouldn't have listened to the counselor. Maybe she was wrong, but then she gets her letter and she is denied she is denied to go to uva and she doesn't even get waitlisted and this devastates her to the point where it kind of breaks her spirit a little bit like she doesn't think she's good enough so peter is there trying to comfort her and let her know like hey you know it's not over yet you know you still got all these other colleges that you applied for you know so she's waiting weeks and weeks and weeks and still nothing until finally she gets an email from another college that was like i think her second or third choice and then they tell her sorry you didn't get in but you got waitlisted so at that point she's just like okay well you know that's some good news and some not good news but you know at least i'm waitlisted and then at this point she's just like so what am i gonna do i have no future like i haven't gotten into any colleges you know i thought my test scores were you know amazing and so finally she gets an acceptance one letter and it's from um a college that's about an hour away and she then is like okay she goes and talks to peter and she's like hey i got into this college and he's like okay we can make this work it's only an hour away you know on the weekends i can go and visit you and you know it won't be it won't be a problem like we're gonna make this work and she, he's like and then after a year then you can transfer to uva that was their plan that was you know they had it set everything was gonna work out in their mind like they were just gonna pretty much live a day by day but that was their plan they were gonna visit each other on the weekends and then Laura Jean was gonna transfer after a year so after that like I said she gets accepted into another college which is the four and a half hours away and at this point she's so confused on what she wants to do because she wants to be with Peter she wants to do what they had planned but also she wants to make sure she's getting every opportunity as possible by going to the colleges that she wants to go to even if it's not uva she wants to go to something that's you know pretty similar in academic wise and she just wants to make sure she's doing the best of herself but she also loves peter to where she's like i just you know i just want to be with him so when she tells peter about this and she decides to go to the one that's four and a half hours away he's pretty devastated he just like how could you you know we had a plan the plan was gonna work and now you're just changing it all up on me and you know he was pretty upset and then she's just like peter like i didn't tell you no to the colleges that you would want to go to like please just give me this respect it whatever but he's just kind of upset to where he doesn't want to hear it and he pretty much just leaves it at that for a while until one day Lara goes up to peter's house and he wasn't there but his mom was there and his mom is pretty much saying, hey, Lara Jean, you know, I love you guys. I know you guys love each other, but I need you to do me a favor. I need you to break up with Peter because he wants to go to the college you want to go to. He wants to make sure that he's with you. And that's just too expensive for me right now. Like, I can't afford that. The only reason why he is able to even go to UVA is because he's on a scholarship. So Lara Jean completely understands what she's com where she's coming from. She had no idea that Peter was thinking about transferring over to where Lara Jean was at. So that's when she tells Peter, like, I'm sorry, but we can't be together anymore. And Peter is completely heartbroken. And, like, kind of, he's, like, really shocked as to why she's breaking up with him. Like, he doesn't understand what's going on. 
until finally like she's like yeah your mom you told me this and i don't want you to ruin your chances to go to the school that you want to go to you know you deserve you got your scholarship you deserve to go there they want you there and that kind of makes peter so upset he's like why are you trying to let everybody ruin it for us like it's not even about them you know it's us you know we're gonna make this work regardless so you know that's pretty much the whole story is them going back and forth about colleges you know making sure they just want to be together they don't want to reflect their relationship on their family like um josh and margo how they broke up because she didn't want to have a boyfriend when she went off to college his parents his parents his parents split up and his dad ended up remarrying and having a whole other family you know like he just wanted to be with Largene and Largene just wanted to be with him. He didn't. They were so tired of comparing their relationship to everyone else, thinking that it wasn't going to work when it was really them not making it work because they were too busy comparing their relationships. So at the end of the story, they just pretty much said, we're going to do this. We love each other. If our love is strong enough, we're going to make it through. Like, you know, we're going to figure it out. You're going to go to UVA and I'm going to go to this other college that's four hours away and that's just that you know they were gonna make it work and that's pretty much the whole entire story yeah, I know this is a long video but I just kind of want to get a feel for what I'm trying to do next time I'll be a little bit more educational and make sure I have enough information on the book so it's not all over the place so yeah um, this is my first time doing my behind the book series and I really can't wait to do more things with um, books you know because I do incredibly love books I could spend it like hours in Barnes and Nobles that's really my comfort place is Barnes and Nobles but to be honest anytime I go to the store I always check out the book section whether it be the grocery store whether it be Dollar Tree like I always go and check out the book section because you never know there could be some hidden treasures anywhere you look so anyways I'm gonna go ahead and end it off with that again the last of the trilogy that I read was always and forever Laura Jean by Jenny Han um I do want to check out some of other Jenny Han's books but for now I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it with that thank you guys for stopping by I hope you guys enjoyed the video um and I can't wait to see you guys on the next one if you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up let me know down below any recommendation books you would like for me to read or you feel I would enjoy reading so yeah I'll see you guys on the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And happy Friday. Bye.